All right, guys, I wasn't even gonna upload another video today because I was for sure my Eminem, Death to Slim Shady full album reaction would be out. But apparently, because usually they have to uh, lift a claim or make something public after two days of a claim with no response. But apparently they're gonna be pushing this for the whole week. So I right now have my full Death of Slim Shady album review on my Patreon. A lot of people are going over there and go check it out. I'm gonna put the link in the pinned comment. Go check it out. Uh, so at the end of the week, like five more days, my whole thing will be up on YouTube. But until then, I got this why Kendrick Lamar secretly hates Big Sean. Because I come to find out, some of y'all don't know the, the history of these two. And why I said that uh, 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 freestyle had to be a diss. So let's go into it. Kendrick Lamar and Big Sean have been secretly... Shout out to Luesta. This is to educate all y'all. Let's go. Beefing for the past decade. What started yeah. off as two rappers collaborating to create music together would eventually churn into a disaster, <laughs> leading to a series of back and forths and a subliminal warfare that lasted for an entire decade. My name is Luesta, yeah. and in this week's documentary, Shout we're going to unpack how Kendrick Lamar almost destroyed Big Sean's career yeah. and the path it took to get there. <laughs> to this day, it surprised me how many people didn't know about this. It really did. It really did. Uh, a lot of the people who are saying, like a lot of the people who know, be like, bro, that, that sh what Sean said is going to be taken as a diss no matter what because their history. People are like, what's their history? I thought they were cool. It's like, took to get there. Let's get to it. To this day, new info on yeah, this bad doing the whole video. Light. Like this leaked Kendrick verse that almost ended up on Element off mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar's critically acclaimed album, Damn, from what 2017. What a verse. I reacted to that. Which Go contained check it out. bars so ruthless that rumors even spread. By the way, I reacted to that whole diss, uh, that whole leaked uh, uh, Element verse. Go check it out they were AI generated. Now, yep. I can't play the song because of copyright, but later in this video, we're gonna go through it bar for bar and really showcase how Kendrick destroyed him. This had yep. people wondering, what did Big Sean do to Kendrick that would lead him to absolutely cooking him on a track We like gonna find out this today! This is especially weird for someone like Kendrick Lamar, who really uh. stays to himself and avoids all the politics that come with being a rapper in the modern era. The answer is complicated, but- That's not all. I will say you are right about that, but if there's one person who gonna push the line, I'm, what I learned is y'all don't like the West Coast, and I'm fine with it. I'll push the line with it. Pick your niggas off one at a time with it. We could be on a three-hour time difference. If there's one nigga that will press an issue on some hip-hop shit, it's, it's Kendrick. He gonna stay out of the politics, but once it comes to some battles, oh, he gonna be like, what's up? Who talking? Who, who talking crazy? Who talking crazy, man? <laughs> I learned this year... Ken in the last couple months, Kendrick legitimately is the boogeyman of hip-hop. Being a rapper in the modern era, the answer is complicated, but it all started way back in 2013 with the release of a song you might have heard of called Control. What a this hip -hop track moment. was supposed to be featured on Big Sean's 2013 album called Hall of Fame and is a track that had a collaboration with Kendrick Lamar and Jay Electronica. What now, the reasons it moment. was left off the album will also be discussed later in this video, but just to jog your memory, Kendrick spit a lengthy verse that shook up the rap game forever. He went Still for the shook, throats yep. of the best rappers in his generation, claiming that he's not only better than them, but that he's also amongst the top five most notable names in the genre, such as Jay-Z, Nas, Eminem, and Andre 3000. I heard the barber shots being great debates all the time about who's the best MC, Kendrick Jigger and Nas. Oh, no. Eminem, Andre 3000, the rest of y'all. New nip, that's new nip, don't get involved. Uh, In this verse, Kendrick also made a really bold move, claiming that he. I would say of the modern era, he is the number one. Of the modern era, I put him above all those people that he said. Of the modern era, of the people, of the contemporary artists pushing the line right now, Kendrick is the jay-z he is all of those niggas of his era because each of those people were like the litmus tests of their eras so it's like jay-z biggie eminem andre 3000 he is that for modern day hip-hop he was not only the king of the west coast but also the east coast which became a pretty controversial topic i'm at the offspring i'm the king of new york king of the coast one hand i, I juggle, juggle the boat the juggernaut's all in your juggler you take me for joke <laughs> then kendrick That's dropped his final snap. bomb the one that of course got the entire rap industry talking about him where he name dropped all of the hottest rappers in the game at the time, claiming that he wanted to murder them and make sure their fans have never heard of them. Amongst these names was Big Not Sean himself, from them, the man. creator of the track, which many thought crossed the line a bit. I'm usually homeboys with the same niggas I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop and, and you know, know what time, time it is, nigga. That goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale, 
pushing T, Meat Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Drake. Big Sean, J Electron, Tyler McMiller. I got love for you all, but, but I'm, I'm trying, trying to make you, nigga. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you, nigga. Now, if you're a Kendrick fan, this may not be shocking that Kendrick came at Big Sean like that. Even not at on all. his own not song. Given that he's always had this top dog attitude from day one. I mean, long. And given the fact this nigga is a battle rapper, <laughs> Kendrick has battles on YouTube right now. This nigga could have just been easily been on URL right now. He's a. Ba Bro, there's this. There's a battle rap. There's this culture in hip hop that is called battle rap. Let me educate y'all. And as somebody like me who came from that culture, we look at competition in hip hop differently, right? Like, so with him, oh yeah. Before Kendrick so became a, a household rap. name, he created a song where he mentioned a range of rappers. He dropped names from big stars That's like Eminem and Jay Z, mentality. all the way to other well I love y'all, but I'm gonna kill y'all. Like Lupe Fiasco and Lil Wayne. I'm the best rapper. I'm the best rapper alive. I'm the best rapper alive. Take him and shoot him and die. I'm going after Kanye. Lupe Fiasco and Nas. Good dog and Mr. Andre. Eminem bust up a spot. That's his monster freestyle. Oh, I love it. I reacted to this too. Go check it out. However, at the time of when his control verse dropped, Kendrick was riding off the massive success of his 2012 project called Good, Good Kid, Kid Mad City, mm, which is classic. now considered a generational classic. Fast. And to many, it seemed like he was this new kid in the game who was getting a little too cocky. So his verse rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Punch, who was the president for the label Kendrick was signed to Shout at out the to time, Matt Hoffa. said that Kendrick did this because they Daylight. both felt the game had turned too soft. My perspective was Sean sent the record. And um, before that, me and Kendrick was talking about what was going on at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm like, yo, everybody is, is friendly right now. At I'm like, the first dude that come and change that is gonna start a new wave. I mean, it's safe to say that- As some of y'all don't remember, but this was the era of one train. Y'all remember that? Like this era was the most kumbaya, most we're all friends, which is which is cool. You know, that's, that's good, especially coming off of, you know, super aggressive hip hop. But it got to a point where it got nasty. It got to the point where it felt like nobody even wanted to compete anymore. Nobody even wanted to rock the boat and it got corny like it got soup so when niggas forget it was a super like clicky very high schooly time in hip-hop and Kendrick came and god shook that up Respect. He was low-key right. Because immediately after the song Control drop, it prompted a response diss tracks from so That's many rappers it that it's truly yeah. hard to name them all. There were really. also tons of rappers coming at him on social media. And they weren't even such as Mac Miller, who said he's going to start coming with the wildest <laughs> adjective bars that no one has ever heard. Rest in peace to Mac Miller. This is the funniest tweet that came from this whole thing. Because <laughs> he said he no noun or verb. He's like, all right, now I'm going to adjective you. Man, rest. No Mac Miller slander will be accepted, rest in peace, man. Since he can't do no more nouns and verbs, Lupe Fiasco was also really in his feelings, dissing Kendrick in numerous tweets, claiming that the bar was so low that you need a shovel to get it now. And some rappers like Joey Badass simply showed love. One thing that was for certain though, was that many rappers were pissed and thought it was disrespectful. Rolling Stone even went as far as to claim that this verse literally changed the world. And the verse was the reason that legendary rappers like Diddy and J. Cole literally started fighting in a club Fist one time. Fights. You have Diddy and J. Cole fighting in the club because of that control song. Yeah, right. That's what they say in the reason it. They was in a club, mm -hmm. Kendrick was in the club, and Diddy was drunk and he tried to approach Kendrick about his uh, king and- Isn't it crazy now when we know who Diddy really is? I'm glad, I'm glad Kendrick offended that nigga. Good shit, Kendrick. And I'm, and you know what? I'm glad Cole stood on business too. I'm glad, that's the realest, I like how, Ken, for, on, on, for the sake of Kendrick. Cole said, Cole must have knew something. He said, hey, you freak. I know this freaky ass boy Diddy ain't finna come at Kendrick. Yo, calm down with your freaky ass, bro. Throw the, put your hands up with your freaky ass, bro. I know where your hands been. First, sanitize them. And unless, <laughs> nigga, who got sanitizer? Make sure he's sanitized, then we gonna throw, nigga. Cause I ain't trying to catch an STD from a punch, you freaky ass boy. In New York, verse on your control. 
Diddy Slayer gonna go on forever. I'm here for it. Pro song. <laughs> mm-hmm. And try to pour a drink on him, and that's when J. Cole intervened. I don't believe it. And now, even Shout though it may seem Cole. like Kendrick did this purposely, he himself didn't know it would cause such a stir. Did you know when you went in just to do that verse? Honestly. That that it would take and it would have this kind of impact no. on music. How do you no. see this, that kind of I impact? I didn't know until after, you know, you see the 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 hooray and hoorah about it. The fact that hip hop hasn't been uh, sh- sh- shaken up, up in a long time. Exactly. You know, when I went in and did the verse, I thought I was just having fun. Let's just be 100% transparent. Every time Kendrick comes in, he shakes up the game. I'm dead serious. Like, just think about it. Kendrick don't come out a lot, but when he do, he shake the... Bro, he arguably dropped the the biggest diss track in history. He's arguably in the biggest, was created one of the biggest rap battles in history. And let's also give Drake his credit, because without Drake, it would not have been one of the biggest. Kendrick couldn't just battle any nigga and it'd be the biggest. It was because it was the two titans going against each other. I Yeah, and I love that energy from Kendrick. And Kendrick here even seemed like he was like, man, I don't know what I started, da 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 But I love how Kendrick's energy now is just like, I don't... What I learned is the industry, I, I'll pick the whole industry off. Nigga, I don't care if y'all, nigga, I like that. Aaron here. Big Sean got washed and was low-key made to look like a little bitch on his own song. And Damn, Kendrick is simply a menace for doing this. So it makes you wonder what Big Sean, the rapper who was essentially dissed on his own track, was thinking in the midst of all this. Well, at first, Big Sean didn't really seem to care and was instead first, praising the impact attention. it had on the game. I knew what it was. I knew what it was for the culture of hip hop. You see how excited people are, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I wanted this. to do that. I wanted to do that for music. And regardless of all I wanted to do that for music. I wanted to the excitement. Everybody remember he said that. All the attention Kendrick's verse was getting at the time. Big Sean seemed pretty unbothered by all the Now talk. watch this Like I said, with three rappers hop on the song, somebody's always gonna shine. I love my verse, and I think I have some great quotables in there. Which but great. despite the respectful that. and relaxed attitude watch we saw this. at first, Big Sean ended up leaving this track off his Hall of Fame album that was released weeks later. And Why everyone was that? shocked. Because this song clearly would have been a standout off the album. And I think it would have been the biggest moment off that album. This is a, a standoff off that album. If Control was on Kent, Control is one of um, um, Big Sean's biggest songs ever. I don't care what you say. It just, you can't analyze it the same way because he didn't put it on streaming and stuff. So the numbers are different. But when you go back and look at that album, there was big moments. There wasn't a moment like Control off that album. There wasn't a moment off control of anybody's album that year. <laughs> Let's keep it real. Potentially the most popular track. Could it be that the song just didn't fit the context of the album? No. Or was it that he felt in Paris that Kendrick Lamar absolutely obliterated his verse and disrespected him in the process? Well, Big Sean claimed that the song Control missed the album because of a sample. A claim that wouldn't age well, as you'll see later in this video. Whether this was true or not, we may never know. But considering how much of an impact the song made and how many people got riled up about it. For how big the song was, if they really wanted the amp, album he would have changed the sample stop it bro for how big of a moment stop it nigga do you think if hot drake drops god's plan and the only thing that's stopping is one sample then they're just gonna go oh looks like we can't drop our biggest song ever all right move on nigga. <laughs> they would have took it out they would have changed it. They would have, nah, nigga, nah, that's not true. Let me just put that out there. But it didn't make sense not to include it. However, if we fast forward two years later to 2015, now watch how Big Sean would make some pretty interesting statements in an interview with Complex watch. that made people even more suspicious about his intentions to leave the song off the album. Exactly. He was suddenly making claims that the song had a lot of negativity and that he knew the verse would allow a lot of drama and bullshit to thrive. Now, remember, it was a great moment for hip hop, you know, Niggas loved it. He loved everything, the attention it was getting. Now, all of a sudden, it's too much negative energy. Huh. Which was far from his initial praise and positivity. In a couple of short years, Big Sean seemingly had let this control verse situation get to his head. And he was clearly embarrassed, frustrated, and angry about it. Not long after coming out with these statements, he would fire the first of many blows in what would become one of the most patient and sneaky beefs in modern rap history. As I explained earlier, Kendrick's control verse led to tons of rappers dropping responses and diss tracks. But when Big Sean dropped Me, Myself, and I freestyle in 2015, it seemed like he was trying to subtly call out his peers. Ooh, if y'all bragging about so-and-so like, oh, he really it? The new nigga 
rap or can he really spit? Or do we just hide behind the skits like half of these rappers doing? And y'all fuck go and praise him in this bitch like they the savior of this shit. Now, now the thing about this to me is that's a clear shot of Kendrick. And, and and now history is going to make you maybe not think it is as much. At the time, the, the praise that Kendrick was getting from Good Kid, Mad City for those skits and making it feel like an album again, well, people weren't doing that anymore like or weren't prolifically doing that at the size he was. So he was getting all the praise. So this is another one of those moments that either you were dissing Kendrick or you wanted us to think you were dissing Kendrick. I don't... This is the thing about Big Sean I'll never understand. It's like, my nigga, stop blaming us. When nigga get praised as the new savior of hip hop, which Kendrick was getting praised, I'm pretty sure there's a, with the crown and all that. He's been praised as that. And he's been praised as someone who brought skits back. Then you diss somebody for being the savior of hip hop and having skits. And then you want us to go, oh, I get, he's not talking about Kendrick. She got, after the control? And I fully understand why Kendrick would be upset because it's like, one, why, if you had a problem with my verse and control, why did you clear it? Or like, why did you, why did you put, why was it only an issue after the feedback? Like, why didn't you tell me to change it? Or you, why you ain't changed your verse if you felt like I got you? Why? I gave you all my time. I gave you all that. I gave you one of the biggest moments of hip hop at the time. And you just took my shit off. All right. And it feels like you took a shot at me. Right. A few things stand out about these lines. First, the mention of skits. What makes this pair of bars so interesting is that around the same time, Kendrick was enjoying massive success with his album Good Kid Mad City, which added in multiple skits to aid in telling his story. This wasn't super common for albums at the time, X. and Kendrick was really one of the first ones who started this trend and made it popular. Brought back the trend, Lewis. They don't say started. <laughs> Brought it back. <laughs> Don't say that, nigga, because Kendrick was nowhere near the nigga who started skits. Wasn't even close. In fact, skits in the beginning, you couldn't... That's why it was such a big thing, because it felt like a classic album again. Because all the old classic album has skits. Ready to Die. Um, I'm not sure if Life After Death does. Um... You think of most Eminem's albums, the skit. So he brought it back for the modern era. He was really one of the first ones who started this trend and made it popular. And it seemed like Sean was taking a dig at him for this. Sean also refers to this mystery so-and-so as the savior of this shit. Exactly. A likely reference to all the people who widely considered Ken- Sorry, I don't mean to pause so much, but this feels like, you know, I treat y'all like I treat my homies and we have hip hop conversations. So I just talk when I need to talk. Yeah, it's like, Ken, uh, Sean, one thing I will say, if you're not meaning to diss Kendrick, you're doing an awful job at making it feel like you're not trying to diss Kendrick. Because don't this feel exactly like what he did in the uh, uh, Rap Radar freestyle? Where it's like, you don't come out and say it, but everything you're saying applies to Kendrick. Stop saying, if you don't want us to feel like you're dissing Kendrick, just stop saying disses that also apply to Kendrick. I feel like that's super simple. I feel like that's not asking too much as a fan, is it? Like, if you say something that applies to a nigga, I'm not supposed to apply it to a nigga? Kendrick, the savior of rap. People were sure that Sean the Don had finally snapped after years of personal torment from being washed. And on. like I said, I'm not. If if he stood behind these shots, I would actually have more respect. I don't have. I'm not mad at him for this. I'm mad at him for the way that he handles it after the fact, gang. Like, I really feel like Sean. Now, if I had my money on it, I'm thinking Kendrick's washing him. But I think Sean got bars. Sean can rap. Sean not just gonna go down like a hoe, but it feel like something feel like he's like afraid of that nigga. I don't I could be wrong, but it's just on control. A truth he would fight against for years, as you'll see down the line. Shortly after this track's release, the two came and back Sean together in a surprising Sean pair up rap, by the masterful rap. hands of DJ Khaled. They each hopped on a verse for the song Holy Key. Now, there's not much to this track other than the fact that Complex reached super hard by saying there's a pair of bars in Sean's verse with a similar flow to Kendrick that could also be seen as callbacks to the control verse. But like, no, come on. <laughs> but in a minute, I'll tell you why that's the song reach. Holy <laughs> Key actually played a crucial role in explaining this beef. While all this was happening, Kendrick Lamar was in the process of launching his album to pimp a butterfly this album would go on to be another phenomenal project an getting 10 out of 10 ratings from some of the harshest critics and was absolutely showered with grammy nominations and even took home some yo shout out to fantano for being the standard 
niggas act like they hate Anthony Fantano, but I swear to you, when Anthony, as a reviewer, I've learned that most of you are going to hate you until you give him a good review, and then it's like... <laughs> Some awards. Overall, Shout out both to the, the music industry and Kendrick fans were totally blown away by this album and had nothing but praise for it. We However, no right. mention of Big Sean could be detected here, but one thing that is for certain, Sean was only fueled by more jealousy, seeing k -Dot succeed effortlessly without giving him- I don't know about that, Lou. That's a, that's a little bit of a reach. You'd have to ask Sean, like, to just say he was fueled by jealousy is crazy. From the time of day. Perhaps that would inspire his next attempt he could just be fueled by competition. attention. When Big Sean dropped a track called No More Interviews in October of 2016, where he says, Not impressed by you niggas rapping fast and sound like one big ass for attack, but trash when I'm rapping it back, who you put in your top five and claim they to save your rap? On a track where he- You said, nigga, you keep- Why do you keep specifically saying the savior of rap thing? You you know who we're gonna think you're talking about, bro. I don't understand this shit. The, this would be like if when Get Rich or Die Trying dropped, I started making diss tracks about niggas who get shot. Or, oh, a nigga bring it back. Niggas think they bring it back. Gangster rap after that. And then 50 Cent gets offended. I'm like, no, this it's the fans. It's their fault. They're painting narratives. He's airing out all his dirty laundry, addressing breakups and beefs with rappers like Kid Cudi. It's no surprise that people speculate that a few of these bars were directed at Kendrick. For one, he hints at not being impressed by rappers who rap fast. And something Kendrick. that Kendrick Lamar was doing a lot more around this specific time period. Yeah. Then there's the fact he says whoop de woo And it's insane that he said that. And then I'm pretty sure he had Eminem on this album also. So it's like... If you're not dissing Kendrick, who you dissing Eminem, nigga? You clearly not dissing Eminem. Who are you talking about? Put some names on these bullets and we wouldn't have these misunderstandings. Sean Don, boy, I do it. B.I.G., let's do that. Which is something Kendrick Lamar famously says on his song, Cut You Off. Says whoop de whoop which is something Kendrick Lamar famously says on his song, Cut You Off. Cause every That's a reach. Time you come around, you be hollering at whoop de whoop whoop de whoop is just a common, especially in the West Coast, is a common thing to say. Dr. J said, whoop de whoop, nigga, what? Y'all don't know that, that's, that's a reach. So whoop de whoop, niggas been saying whoop de whoop forever. Blah say blah, he say she say, oh my God. And this was yet another Big Sean diss that he throws around the term savior of rap and dissing people's top five, which was definitely telling. Since around this time, a number of publications were crowning Kendrick as the king and everyone had Kendrick in their top five. And this All is the also while, why Sh Kendrick came back smoking on your top Sean five. still found himself defending his dignity with the control verse, which was years old by this point Sean. when charlemagne said big sean got washed on a breakfast club episode that aired in 2017 he said this kendrick washed you on control no he, stop it sean come on stop now it, come it. on now. But, how long ago was that what year is this that were you right you got you, you okay right. okay you right. You're, right. You're, right. you're right you're right you're right i still don't feel like i got washed anyway now you got washed on control. Whatever. <laughs> this is this a, led a lot of people ass. rediscussing the now four-year-old verse. It didn't help that notable voices in the community, like Joe Budden, were pushing the narrative and pressuring Big Sean to respond. Kendrick and Sean, that's there. Kendrick and Sean could both come here right now and say, yo, we're not beefing. There was never beef. There was never no anything. I would call both of them liars. Now, Fact. Big Sean would also have a sit Fact. down with Joe Budden to discuss the beef at. But I'm yet to see Kendrick. I could be wrong. I don't see all of Kendrick's interviews. I'm yet to see Kendrick come out and say me and Big Sean are cool. Just somebody show me somewhere after control that nigga said that. That's all I want. Like, or a picture with these niggas together or a social media interaction. They accidentally bumped into each other at an award show. Just show me that. Because it feels like it's Ke Sean saying this and Kendrick's not saying anything. And where I'm from, the only way two niggas can't be beefing is if both of them agree they're not beefing. It can't be one side. <laughs> Link, which will play a major role later in the video. Even worse was that Big Sean seemed to be the only one taking jabs, with no response from Kendrick yet. However, Kendrick would come with vengeance during this low point for yep. Big Sean, and he would begin to the ever Cold regret War. playing this game in the first place. We started War. getting answers that Big Sean was definitely salty in 2017. <laughs> when Big Sean teamed up with DJ Khaled on a track called On Everything, where Big Sean raps, I'm on track to a Billy, I got Khaled fuck with me. That mean I got the holy key and got the key to the city, low nigga. 
Now, many think that this was a dig at Kendrick. Not only for the fact that they both featured on DJ Khaled's song, Holy Key, but also for the fact that both rappers have been given keys to their hometowns. Breach. I, I respect that he has to say every possible angle. Luis, Luis is saying that just on some journalism shit, but this is a reach, nigga. <laughs> this is a reach. Either. Shortly before these verses aired, with Big Sean receiving the key to Detroit and Kendrick receiving the key to Compton. I know this is small, but it had a lot of people talking like crazy. It wasn't until April of 2017 that Kendrick finally responded to Big Sean with some crafty subliminals of his own. In the lead up to releasing his album, Damn, Kendrick released a song called Humble, Woo! one of his biggest songs to date, and nearly has a a billion views on YouTube. In this song, you can hear Kendrick repeatedly using the ad libs hold up and little bitch in the chorus. Again, this is small, but many felt as though this was a play on Big Sean's signature ad libs, a devious device that we'll see him use again later in the story as well. And some have even gone as far as to say that the repeated use of be humble is also directed at Sean, who claimed that he was ditching the humble attitude on the track No Favors, but obviously this is just speculation and it's possibly a huge reach. So was <laughs> yeah. this Kendrick's way of warning Big Sean? It's only a huge reach by the explanation. He is telling Sean to be humble, but it's not because of that lyric. He's just saying, sit, your, sit down for I sit you down. That's all he's saying to know his place it's uncertain but this next track is where the beef escalates to an entirely new level and, and one thing i gotta say is a lot of people thought that this battle was gonna the, the drake and kendrick battle was actually gonna be drake versus big sean a lot of people thought that because drake and K kendrick have had a cold war for a long time but people forget sean was a part of that too sean was a part of that too which is also crazy because if i was drake i would i would have tapped i would have tapped sean in some hours like Yo, enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? Come on, it's 20v1 against me. Let's jump this nigga. People discussing who would win if these two got in a ring. Soon after the release of Humble, Kendrick Lamar dropped another dagger with the song Heart Part 4. This song had now, a number like of Drake disses to different rappers Sean. who were Drake, coming at him, yeah. but a lot of focus was on Big Sean, specifically where he says, My oh. fans can't wait for me to sun your punk ass and crush your whole little shit. I'll be pun your punk ass, you a scared little bitch. Again, we hear Kendrick playing off the Big Sean Lil Bitch ad-lib, but the next line, he mentions someone tiptoeing around his name, whilst also including another ad-lib of his own that seems to sound like he was impersonating Big Sean. Take a listen. When I get at you, homie, don't you tell me you was just playing. Oh, I was just playing, k -Dad. Come on, you know a nigga rock with you, bro. Shut the fuck up. Now, for those of you who think this may be directed... I don't know if he's doing a Big Sean impression, man. I think he's just doing an impression of any rapper, anybody who was going at him at the time. Towards Drake. Now I will say he was attacking Drake and Sean in this thing. Consider this. It's believed that Kendrick sampled a song on the hard part four that was also sampled in control. This would be an especially- Is it believe or is it proven? crushing blow for Big Sean, as Kendrick proved with ease that it wasn't the sample's fault that Control wasn't released all those years ago. But you know, comment down below if you think I'm reaching. But in my opinion, bit, Big Sean had bit. some explaining to do. If it's all true, all I'm saying is you don't have to even go that far. It's it's open. Like Kendrick wasn't really guising it too much. He was using Big Sean's ad lib. If he's doing that on purpose, yeah, he's saying be humble after my yeah. He, you don't gotta go in in at. 35 seconds on track five of Big Sean's second album, he said, I connect the dots. Dots, K dot. Connect, con, con. He's calling uh, Kendrick a convict. Maybe he's saying he doesn't have conviction. That sort of feels like some of these. It might be one of the most evil and genius subliminals ever crafted. With Kendrick finally giving a somewhat firm response to this unlikely beef, the subliminal war was at an all-time high. Both sides had acknowledged that the bad blood had formed, and it all started with a combined work of all things. Would the two rap elites let the beef simmer, or stop it before things got out of hand? With things heating up, each artist crafting bars to clap back at one another, Big Sean realized that it was time to settle things down instead of ramping it up. Whether he was scared of rap savior coming at him, or he just wanted to sort things out, we may never know. But he took the first step in mending the perceived split in a sit-down conversation with Joe Budden that released in 2020, saying, When this whole thing, the whole Damn, this four years ago, time, Ken, big, big Sean Kendrick beef was going on, it was something I wish I would have spoke up about because there was nothing 
My and we know you're not beefing with M. <laughs> my nigga, I wasn't beefing with nobody. It wasn't like a specific person or else I would have said his name. Sean was all over the place in this interview, claiming that there was no real beef to begin with and that all of his disses were meant to call out his peers, nobody in particular. However, it- Yeah, one thing I swear, I understand I got a million subscribers, you know. There's some people who would uh, consider me a celebrity. You know, I've taken pictures. I don't know if I consider myself that. There's people in public who've said that to me. It's whatever. But I hope, right, to the people who view me as that, because there's one thing that celebrities do that just bothers me. It's just rap. It's the gaslighting, bro. It's like, how dare you act like I'm not seeing what I'm seeing? Like, how dare you insult my intelligence and be like, I wasn't beefing with anybody. Why would anybody think that? Just because twice I specifically dissed somebody who people are calling the savior of rap, specifically, why would people think that? I'm, oh, it's the fans' fault. When J. Cole said, oh, they wanted blood. It's the fans' fault. It's not my fault for saying that I'll battle anybody. Then when I got tested, I ran. Stop that shit, bro. There'd be times where fans be reaching. There'd be times where we'd be creating because right now i'm just doing this as a fan we'd be creating shit but also as an artist sean as somebody who's been in controversy someone fam not all of this should be just the fans fault like let's stop this my nigga it just kind of seems like he's cowering and was acting in fear of kendrick washing him yet again but when you step back Damn, and consider Lester what he's saying like this things <laughs> do start to add up from big sean's point of view he was in a weird place after control not because he felt too. frustrated or ashamed but because fans were pushing a narrative he couldn't get around and in every verse I do, people would be like, oh. Not putting control on that thing is going to add, on your album is going to add to that narrative. Right? So, Bo, you could blame the fans. Oh, is this a response? Is this a response? It's like, damn, I can't even show no aggression. People think it's a damn response. It got to a point where somehow it was just a weird tension between me and him, even though it was already said it wasn't no beef because people made it that way. While there are a lot of key reasons people believe that Sean's verses were sneak disses at Kendrick, it begs the question, if control had happened differently, would anyone have thought he was going after Kendrick? I believe the answer is no, since the lyrics are so indirect and sly and the entire beef- No, they're not indirect and sly, Luaster. He specifically said the savior of rap twice. Even if, if in one of those subliminals he said it and then didn't say it, no, he's talking about the same person in two different songs, bro. Like, these aren't just subliminal shots. Rappers get aggressive all the time. And you saw me call out some of those reaches. But, nigga, not ever. How many people are called the savior of rap for you to be going, oh, they call him the savior of rap? Who is him? Who? is based on bars like this where we have to rely on connecting the dots and speculating did the beef even exist or did the fans make it all up some more interesting components of this story started surfacing too big sean admitted that the two of them didn't even acknowledge the beef amongst themselves until tde president punch suggested that he talk to kendrick and it turned out that there might have been more misunderstood than not he said he never really considered reaching out to kendrick among all the internet rumors but once they finally got on the phone they found that the response Respect was mutual. Got his number, we communicated. The, so you the, guys... the respect is mutual. Yeah, it was it was literally nothing. And as time went on, things cooled down even more between them. So all I want to see is Kendra cooperate that. That's all. You know he's had multiple interviews since control, right? I just want to see him cooperate. That's it. That's all. Was that it? Problem solved? Beef settled? It seemed like nobody had further reason to believe that the beef had even existed in the first place. But unfortunately, it could never be that simple. Something spilled to the surface that caused tensions to rise once again. The most direct diss between the two we have ever seen, once hidden in the deep files of unused lyrics, found its way right to the top of the rap game's radar. Exactly. On September 7th, 2023, the rap game was shaken up when an unused verse from Kendrick Lamar's bag got leaked. To preface this, I think it's important to mention that Kendrick had quite a lot of material being leaked since his departure from TDE in 2021. It almost seems to me that someone in the label was not happy about him leaving and thus releasing leftovers to create drama and attention. But this leaked song was the worst of them all. It included many disses to rappers that started drama with Kendrick, such as French Montana, J Electronica, 
Drake, and a large part was spent dissing Big Sean. Now, sadly, I cannot play the song because it will get taken down for copyright, as was the case for this Twitter user who went viral for posting it. But in the song, Kendrick says this, Big Sean, keep sneaking. And mind you, right? Because there was people who, when this came out and I was, they said it was AI. Ask yourself, would TDE, Universal, or anybody be taking down this nigga's tweet if this wasn't real? You tell me. Dissing, I'll let it slide. I think his false confidence got him inspired. I can't make them respect you, baby. It's not my job. You're finally famous for who you date, not, not how, how you, you rhyme, rhyme, boy. Damn. Cute ass raps get your puberty up then make you a classic album before you come at us. Dang. Lots to unpack here. First off, there's a clever double meaning that takes a jab at Big Sean's album, Finally Famous. The implication that Sean didn't get famous because of his music, but rather because of his high profile relationships with celebrities like Ariana Grande and Janae Aiko. But the disc goes even further, as Kendrick can be heard once again using one of Sean's signature boy ad libs against him, which I think really proves that, that those ad libs on yeah. Humble really were meant to be subliminals at Big Sean. This moment created a whole new layer to the beef slash not beef debate that has been taking place for the past decade of rap, especially on Dot side. An element of confusion had been added to the mix, and now it was unclear. Were these two really beefing, or is it all a big misunderstanding like Big Sean claims? Well, he may have gone back on his words, too. As recently in 2021, he seemed to have subtly this Kendrick on the Drink Champs episode. Kendrick or J. Cole? I love both them niggas. Right. I've been to Cole's house, though. Oh, you Kendrick, make... Kendrick been to my house before. So you're making this personal? That's a shot. Even Nori noticed it. Why would you need to know that? Just pick the two. He wanted us to know that he's been reaching out to Kendrick and Kendrick. He wants you to know that I, I'm nice to Kendrick. He's not nice to me. That's unnecessary information. That's like you being like, uh, uh, I can't even think of a, I could only think of a female uh, example where it'd be like if you're a dude and you're just asking who like uh, between like you're talking to another dude about you know two girls he dealt with is like yo which one was badder and they go yeah um the, the first one never responded to my text messages so you know I text her all the time she didn't respond to me so I'm gonna go with the second one it's like nigga I asked you who was badder nigga it's not like you got some undealt with drama you need to talk about no, but I'm just saying, J. Cole opened his doors to me. That's like, I'm, I'm going to go with Cole. I, I respect that. Now, later on. Even Nori said what? And <laughs> Even Nori could censor some personal jabs. Later right? on, Big Sean would point out the fact that rumors and instigation are what caused the situation to escalate, not the rappers and their individual bars alone. He goes on to point out that Joe Budden himself was one of the main proponents in pushing this narrative. And here's what he had to say about that because you you were one of the main people who were pushing the narrative. Yeah. And I can't even fault you for that. So you guys were mature and you deprived us as fans of, of an amazing back and forth. Clearly, Budden had no remorse for spreading what was nothing more than just rumors, but that doesn't entirely why, why explain this hidden verse from Kendrick, which shocked a lot of people when it dropped. Why is it Some fans were pointing rumors? out how uncharacteristically weak the bars on the leaked verse were. This is the this is the dumbest take of the entire, it, what? It couldn't be an incomplete thought or thought of freestyles. I'm not going to put too much weight into why these bars are so weak. Oh, okay. Uh, what Luesta said, not this clip, it was, no, they weren't. The bars are not weak for Kendrick. And in fact, that to me is pure copium to somebody, because you said something that is basically subjective and that's your evidence for it not being real? Well, I didn't like it as much as other Kendrick verses, so it has to be fake. Nigga, if you don't shut your stupid ass. Especially for Kendrick's status, which, what? I mean, I personally disagree with. And it began yeah, to surface like, that the verse <laughs> may have been AI generated and that it was never even recorded, which kind of sounded true being that AI songs have become a norm recently. But that definitely can't be the case if someone was out here copywriting people going viral on Twitter moments after Shucks. posting it. It's hard to say whether or not these rumors- And you know what is the more evidence of that? When the actual, remember that duck hunting or owl hunting that was actually AI Kendrick's song? You know those niggas didn't get attacked for that song when they put it up or reacted to it? Hmm. 
papers hold any validity, but if this was the case, this might be the final piece of proof we need to declare this beef's phony. Yet if it happens to be that this isn't fake, well, we might have missed on one of the greatest rap beefs of all time. I don't think it's over. Here's my thing too, with if I wish Sean would just go, all right, nigga, if you take this shit as shots, it's shots. Let's go. What, what, I'm not afraid of you, Kendrick. Just, okay, if you take it as shots and you're dissing me on League songs, let's go. Let's go. Let's stop. It would, it would actually probably be more healing and they'd probably move further in becoming friends later if they just actually hash this out. Dead serious. I can see Drake and Kendrick, since they've hashed all this out, and niggas gonna think I'm crazy right now for saying it. I can see years from now them being friends before I even see Sean and Kendrick because there's something unresolved there and how dare y'all try to act like we stupid for seeing it. Now, maybe I'm wrong, which I doubt, but you guys can think what you want. Sean, you can say what you want. It is what it is. I think you're dope. I think you're dope enough that I want to see this. Let's see.